Good morning. Um, while we wait for a couple people to join us, just um, feel free to go grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, maybe grab your journal, um, light a candle, uh, whatever will help bring you present in this moment to just relax and to give yourself this time this morning. So I have my cup of chai and I'm ready to go in my really fun Disney mug. So as we begin, I just invite you to get comfortable in your chair, adjust as you need to, um, sit with your spine as uh, straight but relaxed, maybe move your shoulders a little bit, um, feel yourself in your body. If at all possible, um, either if you're sitting, um, sit so that your legs aren't necessarily crossed but that you're comfortable if you're in a chair you know feel your feet flat on the floor I invite you not to cross your legs or your arms you can just really be open to whatever spirit wants to say to you today so we're going to start with some breathing and just getting into our bodies this morning so um, i invite you to close or lower your eyes and we are gonna start from empty. So breathe out. And then let's breathe in together. And let it out with a sigh. <sighs> breathe in again, filling your lungs as much as you can. And then let it out with a sigh, even bigger. <sighs> And one last time. And let it out. Ooh. And just notice how you're feeling in this moment. Notice if there's any places where you feel tense. And I just invite you to See if you can breathe through your heart. If you can focus your attention on love, focus your attention on your heart center. And we do an activity, did an activity with the children at Bethel during our nonviolent communication series on really focusing on the heart and breathing in through the heart. And we called it the heart lock-in. And what we did is we had the kids put their hands over your heart and I invite you to do that so you can really just bring your attention there and just imagine and, and imagine in front of you someone or something you love. It might be, you know, a, a parent, a son or daughter, a friend, it may even be your favorite pet. And I just want you to imagine that there is a beautiful connection, a, a gold cord between you and them, and just send love to them. Every time you breathe out, I want you to just send them love. And as you do that a couple of times, really see if you can feel that connection and feel the love start flowing through your heart. And the next time you breathe in, imagine that love coming back to you. How does that feel? Spend a moment as you breathe out, breathe out love, and as you breathe in, breathe in love. And from this place of being in your heart, feeling the love flowing through you, I just want you to notice if there's any place in your body that you feel tension. And start with your feet, start with your big toe. Big toes do a lot for us. They help with balance, all of our toes do. 
So just start there. Is there any place in your toes and in your feet where you're holding tension? And if there is, just send a little extra love that way. And just continue to take inventory as you move up to your calves, your knees, sending a little extra love to any of those aches and pains, perhaps your thighs, moving up to your hips, Sometimes it feels good to, you know, pat those parts of us or just rub them a little bit, as you notice, particularly if there's tension. Just continue to send love to those parts of you. Move up into your torso, your fingers, your arms. I don't know about you, but I hold a ton of stress in my shoulders. Maybe move your neck a little bit. Move your shoulders up and down. And continue to breathe love to those places. Just really acknowledging and being present with everything that your body does for you. Now, I know David shared this with everyone on Sunday, and as your eyes are still closed and you're focused on breathing in love and breathing out love, I am going to go ahead and read this to you, and I want you to really pay attention. Is there any part of you that tenses up as I read this? And this is the what the Unitarian Minister Forrest Church wrote in his book, Lifecraft. To one extent or another, the following is true. You are self-conscious about your appearance. You feel guilty about things you have done or failed to do. You sometimes have a hard time accepting yourself or forgiving others. You are insecure sexually. You are a less than perfect parent or a less than perfect child of imperfect parents or both. Remember to keep breathing. You are a frustrated husband, wife, or partner, or you are frustrated not to have be a husband, wife, or partner. You have secrets which you might betray or which might betray you at any moment. However successful you are, you fail in ways that matter both to you and to your loved ones. Beyond all this, your life is stressful, your happiness fleeting, and your health insecure. You worry about aging. You sometimes worry about dying. More than once, your heart has been broken by betrayal or loss. And however successful you may be, however deep your faith, when the roof caves in, you shake your fist at the heaven, at heaven, the fates, or life itself. You beg for an answer to the question, why? Why this? Why me? Why now? You wonder what your life means. Now, as you sit for a moment and just feel where that sits in your body, and take a moment to just breathe some extra love to that place. This may hit home in different ways for each one of us. And part of the gift of emptiness is getting the opportunity to look at these things, to let them go, to enfold them with love so that the things that are stopping us, the things that are blocking love from flowing in our lives, are able to be released, are able to be let go. One of the quotes that I've enjoyed in this, particularly in the gift of emptiness, is that instead of obsessing over whatever you lack to overcome the danger, 
it is wiser and safer to set aside the vast majority of your fear than look beyond it to find your true power which as we are finding as we're reading the book is that well of unconditional love. So take a moment right now to notice how you're feeling. How does your body feel? Can you feel the love flowing as we did that heart love breathing as you continue to do that? And from this place, can you hear that still small voice that's God's thunder? Are you willing to let it reverberate through you? What is God wanting to say to you today? And will you notice it? Or is there too much other stuff in the way? So as we have this time together, I'd like you to just listen. What's God's message for you? What thunderstruck moments does God have in store for you this week? What has his voice been quietly whispering in your ear that really reverberates through your entire being, but something gets in the way of really listening? At the beginning of the chapter on the gift of being thunderstruck, St. John of the Cross says, if a man wishes to be sure of the road he treads on, he must close his eyes and walk in the dark. So I invite you today at different moments, maybe pick a time besides this morning, maybe every time you open a door today and you touch a doorknob, Close your eyes, take a deep breath, feel God's love for you, and listen and feel if anything reverberates through your body, what your thunderstruck moment might be. Because those moments come every day and they don't have to um, be, they shake us to our core, but they can be the little things like smelling a flower or noticing a plant, or seeing the buds on the trees, or just in the laughter of a child. So just take a moment every time you open or close a door today, you touch a doorknob, whatever works for you, to close your eyes and take an extra deep breath. Remember this time you gave to yourself or you focused on love, breathing in and out of you, and feel God's love for you. I invite you to have a beautiful and blessed day. Thank you for taking this time for yourself. Thank you.